we're back in Studio K, I'm sitting here with Tarius and the sound. Um, I pronounced it wrong earlier, so I apologize for that, but that's the, that, that's the correct pronunciation, right? That's correct. Okay. Tarius and the sound. Great. Can I have you introduce yourself and uh, maybe where you're from? Sure. So my name is Anthony Omar Lopez, and I'm from Invergrove Heights, Minnesota. I'm actually an alumni to the U, so it's really cool to finally be on Radio K. Totally. Glad to have you back. Um, I understand that TARIAS is a um, acronym, correct? That's correct. Can you tell me what it means and the reasoning kind of behind it? It stands for The answer resides inside all sound. I have a whole song about it. Cool. Um, just a philosophy on life, love, happiness, ways to get along. Oftentimes you can find dissonance in music and just the right person will find that beautiful or you mm. can shift it around and just kind of, this is a really convoluted thing, I but uh, I feel like progress for our culture and society is going to require a lot of authentic and unique expression from individuals and the empathy and listening to make the notes work together, you know, yeah. so it's kind of, I don't know. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I always love intentional um, titles and names, so I, I appreciate that. That's, that's really cool. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so uh, let's talk about first what we just heard from you. Um, that first song, Mary, correct? It's off of uh, the Soft Boy Summer 22, correct? I actually wrote that song when I was 13 years You wrote old. it when you were 13? Wow. And it's and it stuck around. Did you record it when you were 13? or? Um, on the recording you'll find on Soft Boy Summer, I have some sound bites from a recording I found of me at 13 singing the song and also at uh, 16 so I used those as backup vocals with some current vocals as well but yeah the recording on Soft Boy Summer is a blend of 10 years of singing. So what ultimately brought you back to that song and, and why did you record it again so many years later? Um, I, uh, I just I didn't play it for six years probably yeah and I didn't forget about it. I was just like, no, that's not my sound. I have this mental block in my head because, you know, you cringe at middle school. And it's like, oh, that's not what I'm like. I don't know. You get better and you take it again. And I gave it like it's my full attention and changed a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, everybody has always loved this song. This is a good song is a good song regardless of when it was written. I have some stuff from my first album. Open Your Eyes by Anthony Little Blues when I was 12 that I'll still do sometimes. I'll pull out one of those songs. I love that. I love that. Uh, that's great. You have, a, you have a long experience history with songwriting. That's, that's really cool. Um, so that second song, um, Roller Coasting, that's your latest single, right? Cool. Uh, is that part of a project that could be coming out sometime soon, maybe? Or are you not wanting to talk about that? Actually, I have a lot to talk about okay. around roller coasting. I, I put a lot of months into the projects for uh, pre preparing to release that because I wanted to do something unique to go along with the release and I uh, I took it fra to a different medium other than music. I created a sustainable merch drop and a part of the merchandise that I created is six handcrafted sweaters that are in the dis like a wavy design that looks like a roller coaster track and that's meant to represent like light and dark good days bad days and how without darkness there is no light and you need the bad times to contextualize the good times in your life so i just uh uh, spent all the last couple of days uploading the different merchandise items I made to Bandcamp for sale now, but uh, did that in a video and all kinds of stuff. It's currently just a single though; it's not yeah. an album. Okay. Okay. Cool. And that all that stuff dropped. I mean, the roller coaster dropped a couple of weeks ago, but the merch that dropped today. It is live. That is fantastic. That's great news. Great news. Awesome. Um, and then you also played an unreleased song for us today, "A Promise." Can you tell me about that a little bit? Um, yeah, I wrote it, I had the idea for, sorry, um, yeah, totally. about a year ago, <clears throat> there's a voice memo on my phone from, uh, just that whole chorus coming out all at once and sometime in my apartment hanging out with my partner. And I knew it was going to be a great song, but I didn't feel like finishing it or I didn't feel ready for it. And then some tough times came recently and I wanted to make a promise and I used I, t I 
revisited that song and it all kind of came out in the day and I've been getting a terrific response every time I've played it for audiences. It seems to be a universally loved song, yeah. so I wanted to play it tonight, totally. today. I was I was introduced to you with that song actually the first time I saw you play and I was you immediately grabbed me with that so it's it's doing its job I think I think the marker of that is when the performance you're talking about that guitar was very out of tune and I don't think anybody cared because it's just a good song it's a great so yeah totally that's how you know it's good man. Yeah. <laughs> that's great awesome all right well I kind of want to go now to to your origins a little bit if you don't mind um, tell me kind of about um, how you were introduced to, to performing and to songwriting and all of that? Um, so I'm super lucky that I've had a very supportive family my whole life, and uh, I didn't recognize any talents I had, but my sister specifically did when she brought home a guitar from general music class, my older sister, yeah. and in one night she showed me everything they learned in like 12 weeks in like 30 to 40 minutes which is kudos to her as a teacher but i was just picking it up super quick after playing guitar hero and uh mm. that night my sister like was like dad 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 buy him a real guitar because he needs a real guitar and from then on it's just been just just part of my life and how i've processed growing and maturing in this world that we live in yeah. so i've got hundreds of songs man i've been doing this forever that's awesome so other than your sister are you self-taught or have you had mentors along the way musically i've definitely had a few mentors along the way um i took a, a little bit of guitar lessons through middle school but my instruments has always been kind of my my safety blanket my way to explore sound and i base essentially taught myself everything that i know as far as bass drums guitar piano all that but i've been taking voice lessons for the last like 13 years on and off so i've had a lot of really great instruction as far as how to control the immense voice that i always want to throw around <laughs> and some finesse goes a long way totally yeah you have that finesse man and like the dynamics of your of your <clears throat> range is just the way you're able to bring it in after those those um those louder moments it's really cool um yeah where was that okay yeah so so what drew you to to the blues um and to, to that kind of sound um it's the it's the core it's the fun fundamental of our American music, and uh, my dad introduced me to the blues at a very, very early age, and yeah. I've always wanted to be Stevie Ray Vaughan, whether I admitted it to myself <laughs> or not, but um, that's definitely been always there, and I definitely took some detours into jazz, and I went here for theater, musical theater and all that, but... I've never gotten away from the blues and my love for yeah. that that fundamental pillar of music. Um, yeah. uh, you also seem very comfortable as a performer. Was this always the case uh, coming up? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I played my original songs with the band for the first time when I was 10 years old in front of an audience. and. It was very scary, but I had to get it out of the way, and I had to go past that. And then I didn't play my songs for people for many years until I graduated and started hitting the scene and trying to figure out what I was and who I was. Yeah. And I definitely had a good few years of immense anxiety around singing and not being perfect and not being able to get there. When at the core, you just got to feel it. And if you're really invested in what you're doing you don't need to reach as far for technical mumbo jumbo whatever you want to say right. you know totally awesome so so when did you start playing out then around when like um, regularly probably uh, early I, I think a good memory i have is playing uh, paper house back in 2018 and like before they before it closed down yeah that was a really cool experience for me and that was one of my first times getting up by myself i played as melodious back then though i had to, i've oh. changed my stage name a few a good few times is there music out there that's under melodious like on streaming platforms or i'm gonna leave it up okay. <laughs> yeah, okay search the internet for that because it's pretty hard to find oh okay cool but perhaps yeah. perhaps perhaps <laughs> Well, I think this is a good time now to transition in, over into your discography, which you have out under Tarius and the Sound. 
um, your first release was, was a live concert. Uh, tell me about this, the decision to, to do that for your first release. Um, Jeff Buckley. I, I'm a big Jeff Buckley there fan. You go. His <laughs> first put, thing that he put out was live at Shanae. Mm -hmm. And um, I just I put together a compilation of some of my favorite performances from like the summer after lockdown. You know, that was such a big triumph triumphant like return to music for so many people because we couldn't play in public and we couldn't so the first track on there was my first time playing post lockdown and all that and then just I went to New York twice and played in New York City for some of those songs on that record which is crazy to me because who knew you could just send an email and if you follow through on everything you can make real things happen yeah so I was, yeah that's what kind of I just wanted to give space in my discography for the celebration of live music at the core, you know? Totally, yeah. And so on that, in that trip out to New York, you played with a band, correct? Is that... um, the second time, I oh, okay. brought uh, my drummer from Minneapolis, Ben Ehrlich, and I had a friend, Sky Matlock, in New York, who uh, played bass for me. Awesome. Tell me about, uh, do you, so do you enjoy more playing on your own, or do you like having that band there with you? What, which are you more comfortable with? So that kind of gets into why I call myself Taris and the sound. Yeah. Is, um, like, I'm Taris, that's all me. But the sound is always meant to be fluid. So it could be solo, it could be looper, it could be acoustic, it could be with a band. And uh, I love playing with other musicians. Yeah. I don't have a regular band or super close friends that I'm constantly jamming with. So just due to the nature of the last few years of most of our lives, Isolation and solo performance is where I'm at currently, but any blues bassists or drummers want to hit my line, you can find me and I will gladly jam and see what happens. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so another, your, your next release, uh, full length release, Skip Culture. I really want to talk about this one because it's, it's very interesting to me. Can you describe it for those who have not heard it so far? It's a concept album. Yeah, it's a concept album, and the concept is what would it sound like to listen to an album through somebody else's ears that maybe didn't even like the album? Would they make it through the songs? Which songs do they like more or less? And it all really is just dressing for the final song, which is my environmental call to action and imagination, the doe and the fawn. And um, yeah, I go through themes of uh, the labor movement, drugs, <laughs> um, uh, other stuff throughout the uh, little album. And I'm thinking about trying to do a full version of it because all the songs cut off the yeah. intro. That's, like, that's the whole concept is they, they skip and they stop. <laughs> a lot of those, man, I wanted them to keep going too. So, <laughs> Maybe. so, so are you thinking of, of putting out like uh, a version of it where all of them are, are full length? And are, were, were they recorded full length? Because, I mean, it sounds like it's it, it's about to be a full song and then it just cuts off really abruptly. So how did you go about, like, putting that together? Yeah, I mean, it, it really happened pretty quick because once I had the idea for the concept, I'm like, oh, these songs don't even have to be finished. I can just nice. produce it up until this point and this is when the listener, is the capital L listener, is going to skip the song. So I made a lot of those tracks that you hear in one day or one sitting and then maybe did a quick mix. But... Um, that's why I would really love to give the songs the whole time and give them a full length release, but we'll see if that happens. It could be play culture, it could be stop culture, it could have some silence, I don't know, just all kinds of ideas, yeah. the iPod buttons for names. Cool. Yeah, and there's also a great uh, music video that goes with it, so something to put out there. Um, all right, so then your next release was Soft Boy Summer. Um, great release. I'm, so I'm, now that we're approaching the next summer, curious about if you're going to release another EP or album uh, with something boy summer blank boy summer what, what what's happening I have to right? yeah you have because to the third year I got hot boy summer soft boy summer <clears throat> drum roll uh, we got the current plan is broke boy summer Ooh. and I've got a collection of five songs I've had finished for about two years songs that were wrote written in a time of my life where I was 21 22 and just scraping by and yeah. very much broke boy summer very emotional and yeah i think they're fantastic songs it's exciting is there an expected <clears throat> month that that is supposed to be coming out or july or august okay very cool 
I'm looking forward to it for sure. All right, um, I kind of want to talk about your approach to songwriting. You've you've talked kind of a lot about uh, how you use like the voice memo um, app a lot. Like, tell me about how you go about writing your songs. Um, I feel like songwriting needs to be a very subconscious thing for you to do. Um, so I try and get myself comfortable in a state or if I have an idea I just let it come out and be wrong or right or whatever mm. and that's cool when it's coming from inspiration but if I'm sitting with an instrument it just comes from a place of like what sounds good I don't think about notes or anything I try and get my brain out of the situation as much as possible and I having the voice memo is a great safety net because I don't have to even write anything down to memory and a lot of stuff will just be improvised and then then I can go back in with my analytical brain and be like, oh, but this word should be this, and these chords would go better with this melody and all yeah. that. So definitely starting at subconscious and letting the happy accidents happen. Okay, great. And do you write lyrics and the music in conjunction, or uh, is it one thing first and then another thing following that? Depends. Okay, yeah. I, I bet, yeah, it, it's all over the place. Oftentimes I will get like a melodic phrase, and okay. then it's really fun for me to painted with different colors with the chords like it could be a very simple melody then you can reharmonize in any sort of different way and you just find the right thing that fits the tone you know cool um do you have a favorite place that you like to write some place that really inspires you or gets gets the gears going um uh nowhere off the top of my head okay. uh, just wherever the vibes are wherever the mojo's at yeah great um just looking at your your Instagram profile and um, just knowing you, I don't know you very well, but I know that you write a lot of songs, a lot of songs. Um, so how do you decide which ones to go with uh, when you're putting together an EP or album? Um, I'm cracking a smile because I've got probably 40 songs that I haven't decided <laughs> what to do with that are like recorded sitting on my wow. iCloud. So. Um, with roller coasting, I wrote it, recorded it, and submitted it for distribution, and did like a uh, music video for it, and all that, like super quick because mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not gonna let this one just slip through. Um, yeah, I, I guess it's just live songs that I can play live, and that I know people really like. There, that's gonna be a good indicator that I should put it out, but. I don't know. I just I like having my little projects and my little EPs and making worlds and yeah, just whatever fits. So, know. are you more of a concept album person or like uh, having like an underlying message um, for your, for your albums? Absolutely. Okay. It's uh, music. It means more to me than anything else in this world. So um, I try and make my music have meaning that you can find within it if you listen really close. Yeah. Or talk to me about it. I'll talk your ear off. Yeah, totally. That's great. Um, okay, cool. I want to transition a little bit over into your live performance. Uh, can you tell me about um, some some notable performances that you've had, maybe just one or two, uh, in the last year or two? Yeah. Um, in February and March, I was living in Merida, in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Oh. And I was able to lock down a couple gigs at the DeLorean Bar in Centro Merida. And that was just an incredible experience because it was like, I was booked to play two hours of upbeat music as a solo artist outdoors in the middle of an alleyway in downtown Merida. And I learned a bunch of covers like September and all that kind of stuff, like my Billie Jean. Just, I was just going as crazy as I could because it was strangers and uh it was really cool to be in another culture and able to connect with people through music yeah. so that that's one performance that i really 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 enjoyed and i guess uh this one right here is a very meaningful performance for me because i've listened to radio k for years i submitted skip culture and you guys didn't play it oh so, so i wasn't here during that time <laughs> I, i'm sure i i might have to dig through the emails again <laughs> And get that. I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. So <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just giving you a hard time. I know. I know. But, but um, seriously, though, I, want, really I do cool want to that. Be here. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in. I mean, we, we love having you here. Totally. Yeah. Um, cool. I have a couple of fun questions for you now. Okay. If you don't mind. No, no. Um, no. So I, I have every person that come in comes in and do this. Um, I want you to build a bill, right? So 
you get four performers on it, you are one of them. So give me three other performers, dead or alive, that you would want to perform with. And then also give me a venue, if you have one. Okay. I need a second. Yeah, take your time. This is a, this is a monumental decision. This is huge, because it could happen one day. Unless they're dead. <laughs> the only names coming to me are dead. That's fine. That's fine. I, um, this is your world. This is your imaginative world, so... This is gonna be an insane lineup, but we're gonna we're gonna have Stevie Ray Vaughan in Double Trouble open up the show with some real hot blues, nice. and then Jim Morrison is gonna walk on stage and sing some blues with that band, and we'll just slowly bring the rest of the Doors on stage, and then I'm gonna come up and jam with all of them, wow. and then. I think uh, we'll get Stevie Wonder to come up on oh. stage at the end too, and then. So it's like a whole family, like everyone just stays on the stage. Throughout. I mean, I think people can come and go as they please, but I, like I would, it. I would definitely love to do my thing and then get off the stage and watch all that for the last set. Wow. You know? Yeah. Okay. Did, do you have a venue for it? I think at first half. Nice. I think at first half would be pretty cool to see all of them together. Totally. And you with them too. That would be <laughs> that would be quite the bill. Man. It's one of the best questions. Yeah, totally. Thank <laughs> well, thank you. Um, another fun one I have. Um, tell me about three things that you're loving right now. It does not have to be music related. It can be if you want. Uh, three random things that you're just loving. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little too much. Loving that. But, um, it's, I feel like there's a show, I, I watched the, um, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, oh. made me cry. Really? I really loved it. It was a really, really good movie. Um, that's, that, that'll be two. And McDonald's Pinocchio. <laughs> McDonald's Pinocchio. And, um, being alive. Nice. And getting to, getting to walk around the world and be a part of, part of now. Cool. It's really cool. I'm loving that. That's wonderful. Me too. Hell yeah. It's great to be here. All right, um, last question for you. Tell me about uh, some shows that you have coming up or anything else that you want to alert the public of. Cool. Um, well, I'm going to be going from here to Creator's Cup in St. Paul, Lower Town. I'm going to be playing my songs from 5.30 until 7 this evening. It's a free show. And after that, I'm going to be heading back over to Minneapolis, to Northeast, to the White Squirrel Bar, uh, where Carnage the Executioner is hosting the Collaboratory, and I'm going to be doing a featured artist set. And I understand that you're going to be one of the musicians doing the hip-hop karaoke covers. I'll yes, I'll be there. We'll be there together. So, so. We'll definitely jam a few songs yeah. tonight. And that's at 8 and goes to late. Very but. Cool. Yeah, just uh, merch and those two shows are the big things I got coming up. Uh, I have social media, I have a website, tarisinthesound.com, and I'd love to connect with anybody that felt a connection to what I performed today. Great. Awesome. All right, well, th thank you so much for coming in again. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Eli. This has been a dream come true.